Today we're going to talk about why your organization should unify analytics and planning. I'm Craig Schiff and I've been working in the planning and analytics space for over 30 years. In the earlier years I was part of the management team at two major vendors in the space and for the past 20 or so years I've headed up BPM Partners which is a vendor neutral management consulting firm that helps clients put together their roadmap, their requirements, and ultimately identify the best solutions for their unique needs. So let's take a look at unifying planning and analytics. Now there are significant benefits, but rather than lay them out up front here, as we go through the discussion today, I'll identify challenges people are facing and explain how planning and analytics can help address that. But there are two major challenges right now that are easy to understand up front. Why doesn't everyone unify planning and analytics? Well, because many organizations are still using standalone spreadsheets or other legacy systems to do their budgeting and planning, and they don't have very good analytics capabilities in those systems. So therefore, if they have analytics at all, they're in a separate system, usually a BI report and query type tool that IT helps manage. So there's no finance self-sufficiency, it's not connected to the planning system, and it becomes very difficult and cumbersome to link the two. Now, when we look at the systems we're talking about today, they're either called FP&A systems, or planning and analysis, or extended planning and analysis solutions, or the name I prefer, business performance management solutions, which kind of embraces all the elements. You may have seen it called CPM for corporate performance management or EPM for enterprise performance management. But if you look at the four pillars here, the four components that make up performance management, it's everything we're talking about. First and foremost is planning. People need better budgeting, planning, and forecasting. And the reasons are highlighted here because the process takes too long, there's not enough participation and buy-in, and people need to forecast more frequently than they've been doing today based on current economic conditions. The next areas all relate to analytics. When you look at the second area, consolidation and reporting, companies are still trying to get at the right reports with the right information and get it to the right people and do that easily. And the consolidation piece you could argue is kind of the transition point of taking the actual data and preparing it for the analysis piece so it can be combined with planning to enable you to do your variance reporting. The next column, profitability optimization, other operational analytics, obviously cleanly fits under the analytics label. People are focused more on profitability when they have limited resources, be that raw materials or people or dollars to invest. They want to make sure they're investing them in the right place and companies need to understand how everything works and how everything fits together. So if I'm going to make a change to save some costs, I need to understand the ripple effect. So I need to be doing operational analysis to see how the change I might make to the financial plan is going to impact us operationally. Very important analytics component. And the last piece, strategic dashboards and scorecards, data visualization, uh, key performance indicators, all of that falls under the banner of analytics. And again, just to clarify here, the scorecards, the collection of the key metrics, the KPIs, the key performance indicators you care about, and dashboard is kind of a visual way to display that. And when you combine a dashboard with a scorecard, you can call it a performance dashboard. But these are the components of planning and analytics that we seek to unify. This is a diagram I put together when I was part of the BPM Standards Group years ago. This is actually from 2005, but it stood the test of time. This is how these systems work as a unified solution, which has always been the goal. We're not there yet everywhere, but it is, it's the goal. If you take a look at how this is put together, at the bottom layer, you've got the external source systems, external to the BPM system. It's not external to the company, but you've got what you'd expect, your ERP system, your general ledger, other transactional systems, existing data warehouses, unstructured data sitting in documents or spreadsheets, external data that may come in, benchmarks or currency rates or economic indicators. All of that needs to be pulled into the unified solution or a unified planning and analysis system where you will have everything coexist in what we'll call a BPM data mark. The actual and planned data will sit side by side in the same system. It'll be stored relationally or multidimensionally as appropriate for easy analysis and access, and it'll include structured and unstructured data. 
And we're talking about planning and analytics today, but also don't forget all of this needs to tie back to the company strategy. So if you look at the planning and analytics segments here, you understand what planning and forecasting looks like. And then analytics includes consolidation reporting and then analysis and focusing on your key performance indicators, which in the performance management system is where you want to be focused. And then all of that is surfaced and made available to people through various tools, different interfaces. And we'll talk more about that as we go through here. But this framework has been in place for many years and many companies have moved forward and others still need to move forward. So as we look at the challenges and solutions today, we're going to use data from our BPM Pulse survey, which took place earlier this year in the April and May timeframe. It was a global survey with over 450 responses. It was cross industry. These are the industries with the highest representation in the survey. The company size, the largest group was mid-market, but almost a third were also in the large enterprise market. The bulk of respondents did come from North America with Europe having the next largest group. And the business focus area of the people taking the survey, most of them were in finance. Next came cross-functional industry senior executives. So finance transformation officer, for example, COO, and then 12% were from IT. And of course that doesn't add to a hundred. So the other people came from various business units, be it HR, manufacturing, based on the type of company, uh, sales and so on. So the question was, as people move forward with these types of unified performance management or FP&A systems, which components are most important to them? And budgeting and forecasting, which clearly falls under the planning banner of our unifying planning and analytics, is the top of the list, but right behind it is financial reporting and financial analytics, both of which are part of analyzing the data, and then continues on with dashboard. Consolidation preps the data for further analysis, and then you could model the data, and then you have more planning with revenue planning, profitability analysis, and then workforce planning. So all of this is all about planning and analytics. They all coexist in the system, and it's necessary to get the true benefits that they are unified in a single solution. Here's where the challenges come into play. We ask people, what is your current budgeting solution? And you'll see in this survey, 64% of them, you add up the cloud-based and the on-premise versions of performance management or FP&A systems, are doing it in a unified solution today. And 20% say they're doing it in spreadsheets primarily, and 7% are still trying to force fit this into their, their general ledger ERP system, 6% a custom in-house system, and so on and so forth. Now, I would argue, although I believe our survey is fairly accurate, there does have some bias built in, and, and that is who takes the survey. So for people to take this survey about performance management or FP&A systems, they're probably familiar with or using or considering purchasing a unified performance management solution. So I think spreadsheets is underrepresented on this graph because of the nature of who takes the survey. In our field work as consultants helping clients select solutions, the vast majority of them, even the large companies, are relying on spreadsheets primarily. So that's a huge issue. And again, I'm talking about standalone spreadsheets individual productivity tool spreadsheets, not spreadsheets as an interface into a unified solution. So this question is, how happy are you with your budgeting and planning systems and processes today? And then we correlated this back to their response of what they're using as a system, and you could see the greatest dissatisfaction of the people that are using standalone spreadsheets. And again, I don't want to knock spreadsheets. They're very powerful, but they're not a system in and of themselves. So using it as a system which is not a great fit, the bulk of the people here are either somewhat or very dissatisfied. And you see how those segments go away as you move to a performance management, a unified planning and analytic solution. Now, the next question logically was, why are you so dissatisfied? And if we look at this list, and again, it was mostly people who were using spreadsheets primarily that were dissatisfied, so that's who's responding to this. You could recognize, you know, labor intensive, the amount of time it takes, all of those challenges. And they do have some big issues. This is just about automating planning at this point before we even get to analytics. The top of the list there, you can see if you're trying to do that in spreadsheets. But even there, even as they have these big issues, you look at what it's the next segment of the list, the limited analytics and reporting is difficult. So yes, I can't even create a plan, 
But once I do that, I can't even do any analysis of that and I can't report off of it. So this is a big problem. So these people have a big challenge with planning alone, but in addition, the analytics piece is a missing component as well. Now, when people do get a new performance management system, I don't want you to think spreadsheets go away. So we ask them, do you still use spreadsheets if you, if you just bought a new system? And the answer is for the vast majority, 81%, we do. Now, interesting, some of them use it just as a way to involve people who are not part of the new system. So they use spreadsheets as a way to extract some data out into a spreadsheet and give it to someone to analyze who's data who's not part of the system universe, not a licensed user perhaps, or to collect input from someone who's not part of the system. But when you take a look at the more common use cases, it's more for additional analysis. So even though they have a new planning solution that has some capabilities to do analysis built in, they're still using a spreadsheet for analysis. And why is that? It's familiar. They're comfortable. Even if you build in the greatest capabilities, people want to use a spreadsheet to do that analysis. So why not let them? However, make sure it's connected to a single secure database, not standalone redundant data that you know is gonna introduce errors into the system. Other people wanna use the spreadsheet as a way to input. Even though the system may have its own input screens, I live in a spreadsheet all my all my life, all my work life, I've lived in there. I know what it looks like, I know where everything is. Let me just use that to do my analysis, to do my input and so on. And then there are cases where it's another way to get at data, where there's no other easy way to connect to that source system to be able to pass through a spreadsheet format to get data in and out from other systems. So when people look for a new budgeting and planning solution, we ask them to rank on a one to five scale the importance of a long list. And this is the top of the list. And this is important because it touches on all these points that we've been discussing here. So ease of use is at the top of the list. And again, what makes something easy to use? A familiar interface. That's just one way. There's other ways to make the system easy to use, which we'll look at. It needs to be able to handle lots of data. It needs to integrate with Excel. Again, back to the ease of use and all the other uses we just sort of described for Excel. A simple UI for budget owners. So people who you know, don't live in finance or are not in IT, but are contributing to the budget, again, want an interface that they're comfortable with and they can recognize and they can use. And then you could read through the rest of the list. These are kind of core planning functions, driver-based, continuous forecasting. The next item, integrated BPM solution, again, refers to having all the pieces together. In the same place I do planning, I want to find consolidation, reporting, analysis, and so on. I want finance ownership. I don't want it to be dependent on IT to set up a new model or create a new report. I need to get at my data on a more regular basis, particularly if I'm looking at operational data. So I need real-time data integration. And then I need to do bottom-up planning. And if we extended this list further, you'd see top-down planning and all the other planning capabilities. But again, with our focus on unifying planning and analytics, I just wanted to highlight the pieces that relate to that. Now let's move to the reporting side of the equation. What are people using today? And this is a little bit of a different story. So for reporting today, you've got about 50% using unified performance management systems, so it's in there with planning. However, you look at the rest of the people, you have people using BI reporting tools, so standalone BI solutions that they're trying to report off of this data. And you know what that involves. That involves extracting the data, loading it into the BI tool. Hopefully it's the latest data set and then trying to learn a new interface and a new way of doing things separate from the core system. There are still people doing it in spreadsheets and you know cutting and pasting data from here and there and everywhere to try to produce the variance reports. And then there are people doing it in their ERP system, which you know is not very user-friendly. So it gets a little bit messy. And again, you see the need for a unified solution with a common database, familiar interfaces to make this much easier and focus on one data set one version of the truth. So let's talk now specifically about analytics. The question was which analytics capabilities are important in a, a unified performance management solution, but really we're asking people in effect, what do you mean by analytics? People use that term fairly generically. There are things that are specifically called analytics, and we've got some of them here. There are other things that could or could not fall under the umbrella, but again, who are we to judge? This is what people are telling us 
are the important analytics capabilities they need in these systems. At the top of the list is dashboards. Everyone's familiar with dashboards, uh, you know, the way the dashboard looks with all the charts and graphs and gauges uh, and, and the KPIs that populate it, making it a performance dashboard. So that does top the list. But for other people, just simple charts and graphs will do. Something I, they struggle with to get today from whatever system they're using. Just give me some basic charts and graphs and I'll be happy. Now we get into analytics itself. You've got descriptive analytics, which is kind of looking at what's happened, and that's producing your, your reports. Predictive analytics, which is enabling you, enabling you to more accurately predict the future by leveraging machine learning, or more specifically deep, deep learning, to analyze more data points and be able to look at the trends, seasonality, and everything else. So, you know, wedding statistics to AI to produce a more accurate forecast. Pervasive data visualization, so not just off to the side in a dashboard somewhere, but throughout the system, being able to visualize data, looking at trend lines, spark lines, and the like. Integration with BI tools. I may already have a BI tool that I use, and I would like the system, as great as its own innate capabilities are, to leverage the tool that I use by giving me live, direct access to the data in my system, my planning and actual data. Prescriptive analytics, which is more about making recommendations based on the analysis of the data as we go forward, having the system identify some recommendations. And that's kind of a newer and growing area for, for many of the vendors in this space. And also along those same lines of a new and growing area is data lineage and impact analysis understanding how it how a piece of data has moved through the system and what impacts it's had on other data and other elements of the system so that's how users or purchasers of performance management systems are defining analytics and what they're looking for and that's a pretty robust and large selection of capabilities now let's drill into dashboards specifically. What do people want from their dashboards? They want to be able to drill down through multiple levels. So I'm looking at a key metric on here and I see it's out of my tolerance range of the targets that I set. I want to be able to drill down and understand what's happened and what's impacted us to get to this. So I want to get to the root cause, the source of what's causing me to be out of range. I want to to be easy to create a dashboard. Again, ease of use, very important. I want to pull data from multiple data sources. Now, this is interesting, not just the data sources that may already exist in the system. There may be other external data sources or data sitting in a data warehouse that I need to pull in as well. I wanted to use the stoplight and gauge type uh, iconography. Um, some dashboards you see today, today are just simple charts and graphs, but people still want to see, you know, the color coded stoplights or or you know, directional arrows that are also color-coded or, or typical gauges. Cascading dashboards, dashboards that connect to one another and that feed into one another across a company, so from departments rolling up to corporate. I want to be able to enter commentary, so I want to make a dashboard more interactive. So if something is out of the tolerance range and someone comes to look at it, they don't have to track me down and understand if that's a metric I'm responsible for, why it's out of range. I already entered the explanation in there for all to see. Again, integration with BI tools. The product may have its own great capabilities to create a dashboard, but if I'm already familiar with and comfortable with a, a BI tool, I'd like to be able to utilize that with live access to the data. And as I create this dashboard, I'd like to have a library of different chart types to make my life easier, and I'd like to be alerted when things are out of tolerance ranges. Now, we've looked a couple of times here where it said integrate with BI tools, so we asked the question, which BI tools would you like to be integrated into these solutions? And this list has changed over the years. In prior years, Click was higher up on the list, Tableau was higher up, and I guess depending on what ERP or GL you have, you might have preferred one of these other BI capabilities. But today, last year and this year, Power BI has been at the top of the list and we see that growing. Again, we see this in our field work. Almost every customer we work with is adopting Power BI and they wanna make sure their new unified performance management solution leverages or integrates with Power BI. So again, rising to the top of the list here as the interfaces, we see Excel and Power BI continue to be very important as part of this unified performance management solution. So that brings us to this section where if you want to move head ahead now and select a solution to unified planning and analytics, if you've had some of the same challenges people in the survey have had, what do you need to look at? So first, let's summarize. At the beginning, 
We talked about planning and analytics being unified, having significant benefits. Well, let's now review what those are. Well, first of all, a seamless transition from planning to analysis. So I completed the plans. I have a consolidation piece that brought in the actuals and got it in the right format. And now I'm ready to analyze all in one place, all in one solution with familiar interfaces. That relates to a reduced learning curve. Again, if you leverage Excel and Power BI and I'm already using them, it's easier to use. I don't have to learn anything new. Having a common database, a single database, there's no data movement. I don't have to cut and paste data. I don't have to use ETL tools to move the data around. I have all the data in one place and one BPM data mart for ease of analysis and reduced errors. So there's the error reduction. I'm less reliant on IT. So it gives me my finance self-sufficiency. Again, I don't need them to help me move all this data around. Obviously, they do help you connect to the source systems initially for integration. But within the planning and analysis space, once it's in here, you, you're on your own. You don't require IT to help you do that or to write a new report. All of that reduces the cycle time. So you can do this all more quickly. As the data gets updated, you can immediately now report and analyze on it. And it leaves you more time for analysis. As this system is more and more streamlined, you spend less time collecting and moving the data and more time analyzing it. And that also does result in cost savings, reduced labor. You don't need extra components, extra software specialized components, and a lower total cost of ownership results from all of that. So tremendous benefits. And for any or all of those reasons, people are looking to move forward to get to a unified planning and analytics solution. The challenge, of course, as we stated up front, was that people are using either standalone spreadsheets or older systems for planning and budgeting. And on the other hand, they're using standalone BI tools managed by IT for analysis, if they're using anything for analysis at all. So the answer is, how do you resolve that? Well, you need a unified planning and analysis solution that leverages those interfaces that you're familiar with, such as Excel and Power BI, and it's designed to enable ease of use and finance self-sufficiency. What would that look like? All the attributes, if you look for such a solution that you need to be looking for, and this we asked in our survey, uh, there were six attributes to choose from, and this is how they ranked them. Number one was integration with existing systems. And again, this chart takes all the one, two, three, and so on responses and organizes it. So integration with existing systems is very important. And that actually this year rose to the top of the list. As people are bringing in more data from operational sources as well as financial sources, integrations become even more important. Then the items that used to top the list, now number two and three, ease of use and finance self-sufficiency. All of these things are important, but this is a ranked list. And then the price, of course, total cost of ownership becomes important. Using tools you already have in place that you don't need to rebuy helps reduce that price. And then of course you need things like service quality. And then less important to most is a vendor with expertise in their industry. But this is a picture of the key high-level attributes that people look for in a new solution of this type. When they look at multiple vendors to choose these solutions, what's the reason, this is the question that we asked, what's the reason you chose the one you ultimately went with? So the people in our survey who already have a product, why did they choose the one they selected? And the number one reason, the most common reason, was product flexibility. This system works the way I work. I know I see and envision how I could use it. It could ad adapt to the way I operate. I don't need to adapt to the way it operates. It will ad adapt to the way I operate and I could fit in there easily the way I do my business processes, the way I use my systems. It's easy to, to work with. It's flexible and adaptable. And that flexibility also extends to uh, as my business changes and I need more agility and I need a more responsive system, it's flexible in that way as well. Right behind that is scalability and complexity handling. So again, I'm going to bring a lot of data in and I have some complex allocations and calculations. System needs to be responsive. Now, people chose one from this long list of what was the main reason they chose the solution that they chose. So flexibility was number one. For other companies, the number one was scalability, complexity, handling, vendor attributes, some of the things we just looked at, finance self-sufficiency and Excel UI kind of round out the top of this list here, easiest to use and so on and so forth. But this gives you a sense of why people chose the solutions they chose. So these are our recommendations. If you want to join in and get a unified solution, a unified planning and analysis solution for your 
use for your company. These are the four areas to look at. And let's take a look at each one briefly here. Easy to use. So you want a system that's intuitive with minimal training. It fits many different use types across the organization. So the same interface is not ideal for everyone. Some people might want to live in a spreadsheet interface. Some might want to live in a BI type interface. All of this should be finance self-sufficient, meaning you don't need to rely on IT for it. And to get to that, to get to that being intuitive and having appropriate role-based interfaces, leverage the familiar interfaces that are out there that people already are familiar with and know how to use. Rich functionality. Of course, you need robust budgeting and planning. So this is planning and analysis, after all, that we're unifying here. But that needs to be supplemented with powerful modeling, easy, fast, and dynamic reporting, data visualization throughout the system, and the system itself needs to be dynamic and responsive, flexible, and agile. To get the full benefits, it needs to be cloud-based, so you can get it up and running quickly. Anyone could access it wherever they happen to be. Certainly, a large chunk of people are still working at home, so they can easily do that from wherever they are. This facilitates collaboration, getting everyone on board on a cloud-based solution makes it easy for everyone to participate and collaborate. The vendor could update the product more frequently, and you're always running the latest version as those new updates come out. So again, reducing the dependence on IT and keeping you with the latest version of the solution. From a technology standpoint, as we talked about throughout here, performance and scalability is important. People are looking at a lot of data today. Uh, make sure the solution leverages AI and predictive capabilities. Now, we didn't focus too much on that today. We don't have time to cover everything in detail. But if you don't see the value in predictive uh, capabilities today and other AI capabilities, such as anomaly detection and robotic process automation, you will in a few years. And you're going to be purchasing a solution that's going to last for eight to 10 years. And we've seen them last a lot longer than that in many cases. You want to make sure it has these capabilities, which are beginning to deliver real benefits. They're no longer just, you know, the latest and greatest technology, but in fact, they're producing benefits. You want to see analytics integrated in. So you don't really want the analytics, analytics bit, the anal analysis as we've talked about, which we talk about being unified here, it's not unified if it's off to the side. It needs to be integrated into the solution, leveraging one data set uh, on a live basis. And ideally, two-way communications, a fully integrated analytics solution can read and write data to your database. Because if you're using the analytics to do some modeling or at further analysis and you want to write some data back to the system, it's ideal if it's able to do that. So full integration with analytics is very important. Streamlined source data integrations we talked about, and ultimately all needs to be unified. And if you do all this, if you find a solution that addresses most of the things we described here, what are the benefits you'll get? Well, better reports and analysis. So this was the question, what benefits have you received from your unified performance management solution? And I've highlighted the ones here that fit under our theme of unifying planning and analytics. Some of these other elements are just improving the planning piece, which is why I didn't highlight them. All good benefits here, but let's focus on the ones that are related to the unification. Better reports and analysis, easier access to information, reduced errors. You're not cutting and pasting and moving data from place to place. One version of the tr truth, relying on one common data set. More time for analysis. You've sped up the process. Analytics are integrated in, so I don't have to go over to another solution, move data, learn how to use that solution. It's all here, so it leaves you more time to actually analyze. And the end result of all of this is the goal of these systems, better decision making. If I have the right information at my disposal in a timely manner, I'm better equipped to make better decisions. So that wraps up my portion of the presentation. If you have any questions for me, you can contact me at the uh, email address and phone number here. Now I turn this over to Act Terrace. Thank you very much, Craig, for this insightful presentation on the foundation and reasoning of a unified approach to analytics and planning. Um, I would like to cover now for the next 20 minutes uh, a practical demonstration of how this can be implemented in a few live demos and customer case studies. My name is Martin Kratke. I'm one of the founders and CEO of the Acaris Group. Um, I'm always happy to share knowledge and uh, ideas and also answer your questions, so please feel free 
to connect with me on LinkedIn at the link below or with my ID M. Kratke. Um, what I would like to cover today after a quick initial in introduction is um, a more practical overview of how to realize unified analytics and planning and a few real-life examples and, and case studies. Initially, just a few words about us. Um, we were founded in 2007 initially with uh, our consulting arm in Agility that's focused on the implementation of analytics and planning um, environments. And uh, since 2015, with our own product range at Terrace. We're at the moment one of the fastest growing providers uh, of unified analytics and planning solutions. We have uh, three headquarters uh, here in the US, in Chicago, uh, in Europe, in Munich, and um, in Sydney, Australia. We have currently a customer base that spans the globe, nearly every industry and size. Um, what we are doing with our product range at Caris is to overcome the challenges and limitations of uh, legacy disparate silo um, approaches where you had uh, separate solutions for the different aspects so, you know one planning tool another data warehouse environment another report writer a data discovery and so on and so forth so we believe that this creates way too much friction and maintenance and should be replaced as much as possible with a unified approach that overcome the limitation of complex source um, data uh, loading or moving data between different solutions with the limitations that uh, these silos often have, particularly in regards to integration into operational processes, uh, very extensive maintenance efforts, very often what we see out there uh, that a lot of time and effort is spent on external consultants as opposed to um, the team in-house that can maintain these solutions. And then also um, missing functionality as these uh, separate silos typically are not very flexible to adapt. So we propose as a solution to that a unified approach that integrates all the aspects on a single unified data model uh, that caters for all the requirements. And in particular, the, the typical planning analytics cycle of initially setting the targets, monitoring the results, forecasting based on um, changes that uh, might be happening, uh, documenting the learnings and managing tasks uh, in the process to uh, ensure that you achieve your targets. From a technology approach, this looks um, like this and covers these particular steps. So initially, it's about um, integrating uh, your data sources. And that's the key thing for any analytics and planning project. You need to be able to um, get access to your data. Um, so that's the initial step where on the one hand we have completely automated solutions and the other hand generic solutions that load the data into a standard uh, database. And here we typically use Microsoft SQL Server respectively the SQL Server version in the cloud Azure SQL Server. That is extremely scalable, um, secure and um, already in use at most of our customers. So in many cases, that's already the platform for their existing data warehouse. And um, as opposed to uh, just covering this now theoretically, I would like to show you this now live. So here we see now um, our environment, the Acarius environment, the Acarius modeler, that's a, a cloud-based application where you can start a trial within a few minutes. And then you can either use the completely automated solutions. Um, for example, if you want to add QuickBooks companies, you just click on the add button. That would automatically create the link to the, uh, in this case, QuickBooks environment, but it equally works for all the other sources from NetSuite, Salesforce, HubSpot, Zero, and many, many more. So it will automatically load all the data and then also give you the Power BI reports out of the box. So you will get um, something like this, depending on the um, source system, this varies. So 
you get automatically the Power BI reports implemented using best practice standards. And this could be general dashboard environments like this, where uh, we typically cater for multi-company requirements. So the users can load the data from a variety of different ERP systems. So here we can see um, five different ones. And the users can you know, look at a particular uh, company or a consolidated results of multi companies and you can see this automatically changes and then in the same vein they typically get a variety of other reports from you know, sales results profit and loss financial reports and, and many many others that support all the interactive capabilities um, that power bi provides so for example if i click on a particular data point here i can see immediately how does this affect all the other items that i have um, in my report. So this is the initial um, integration for completely ready-made solutions. The other option is to use existing Power BI environments. So um, many of you might be already using Power BI in the organization. It's by far now the leading uh, analytics tool in the world. And they have reports like this that um, is connected to whatever source you're using. And this is now the other approach that we're offering, where we allow you to plan enable, respectively um, load the data from your uh, Power BI environment into a unified central platform by just specifying what uh, you would like to add to the unified model. And, so, and typically you want to do this for planning purposes. So for example, in this case here, we're using Microsoft Dynamics you want to, for example, use the chart of accounts for your planning requirements. And here you can see now this is the chart of accounts as it is set up in Power BI, where you can, of course, also use all the Power BI data transformation capabilities so to modify this to your particular needs. And then with just a click of a button, you add this to a carries. And then that gives you the write back capability. So this will create a write back model, which is just another data source that you can add to Power BI, which is just based on normal standard SQL Server. And then you can just add the, the new planning table, for example, as a new scenario, into your existing Power BI environment. And then also do your planning directly from here. So if you want to, for example, now uh, for uh, forecasting purposes, change the, uh, the data here, incre increase, for example, your forecast, you can do this directly here on any level of the model. So here uh, in this sales group, I have a lot of other accounts underneath. I'm doing this for the entire group. So this would automatically modify my planning assumptions for the entire group for all sales accounts. So this just is a quick example of how you can connect Power BI data. And so you have now the data in this central standard SQL um, database. And what we are doing then is to add the planning logic. You saw a little bit um, before, but I will show you a few more examples in the next um, few minutes. So you have then the option to use this data, obviously, from Power BI, but we equally support other environments. So we also have a, a read-write add-in, a very comprehensive one in Excel. So you can access the data directly from your familiar Excel environments, but without the hassle because everything is stored in the single platform, every user has access and will see the same data. And when you write back, the data isn't stored in the spreadsheet, but it's stored in the central database with all the capabilities. So you have an exact audit trail. You can see um, you know, who has done what. You have very detailed user rights. Um, and you can realize all the capabilities uh, that are typically required in the FPNA process, you know, from dashboards, obviously, in Power BI, to data modeling that you can do directly in the Actaris modeler that you've seen before, uh, consolidation, and of course, planning and forecasting. And this is what I want to show you now a little bit, what is possible in the planning space. So what we see here now is um, the normal Power BI environment with all the analytics functionality that Power BI provides. So if I, for example, click on a particular entity here, I can immediately see what's going on in that entity or if I click on another one, I can see the salespeople in that uh, entity. I can see the forecasts that have changed. 
I can look at particular details. So here I can see uh, my actuals are way above the plan. So I can have a look here what's going on. And they get now planning insights. So I can see what are the key drivers for this variance. And I can see my biggest variance is here the cost of sales in Adventure Work Cycle at the bottom where we've had originally a forecast of 300,000, but in the end it turned out to be 1.1 million. Uh, I also have um, more advanced options here for artificial intelligence insights. So here um, the system has automatically uh, identified interesting facts that are presented here to me so that this particular salesperson um, is very much above the rest and a few other interesting insights that the system has automatically identified here. So that's the, the typical Power BI analytics power. But um, what we're adding now here are the planning capabilities. So this is um, what the carries brings to the table, that in addition to all the analytics power, you can cover pretty much any scenario from a planning perspective, from typical financial planning, rolling forecast, artificial intelligence driven forecasting, driver-based planning, project planning, sales analytics, capital expenditure, HR, and many, many more. Um, I, won't, I won't go um, through all of them, but I want to show you uh, a few ones. So for example, we saw here, we had this issue that the cost of sales in adventure work cycle, um, our forecast was way too low. So what I can do is now here I can drill down to the uh, particular detailed planning environments. So here I have now a form that shows the planning scenario where I can see now um, for particular time periods and for particular account groups. So for example, I can drill down here into particular detail accounts. I can drill down here into the quarter details. I already get color coding here where the user is allowed to write back. I can see what are the variances to the prior year periods. I can see the relative variance that I can immediately see at a glance and you know, where are the things coming from. And we saw here the 300,000 um, that were initially forecasted here are uh, way behind um, our actuals. So I can now adapt this on any level of the model. For example, I could go to the total quarter can see this is 900,000 but actually it needs to be about three times this. So I can now edit my forecast and say okay this is now we need to uh, change this to uh, 3 million. So I can see this was changed now and now um, I could also make some other assumptions that for example overall my cost of sales given particular uh, environment factors are uh, not uh, enough. And I can change this now with a variety of um, planning functionalities to make it easier for me. So for example, this could be absolute additions to a particular number, relative changes, this could be filling out um, uh, until the rest of the period. For example, I want to have a price until the end of the year. Um, or I can do just a simple relative increase where I say, I think overall my cost of sales in that quarter will go up by 10%. Uh, immediately I can see what are the implications, uh, I can see how does this change my KPIs and how was this uh, adapted to the lower level. So if I drill down here now I can see the 10% increase was automatically applied to the standard cost of sales and if I drill down to the month I can see equally that was um, adjusted here. If I go back to the main form and have a look, you know, I can immediately see that this was adjusted. So now our variance is, is uh, way less than it was uh, before, where um, I have simply um, not um, budgeted enough um, for the cost of sales. And equally, this would also work for sales. So for example, um, if I want to see, you know, where was this person particularly successful, I can see here, for example, in this case, the key driver came from a particular product where we initially hadn't had budgeted anything. Again, it's just a simple drill through to the sales planning and I could adjust now um, this person's um, budgets on any level of the model as you've seen before. Uh, equally, uh, I can copy scenarios. So I could, for example, say I want to do my new forecast. I want to copy the forecast of the current quarter to the next one. I can add now as many conditions as I want. So for example, I could say here, I want to copy my um, 
actuals as the basis for the new forecast in the um, next quarter. Just save this, click on copy, and this will be automatically copied. And you saw this, this happened in seconds, and this shows a little bit the power of the uh, Actaris uh, engine. And in a similar way, uh, you can do this now for any other planning requirement. So we could do this for you know, HR planning, where we have now very detailed um, HR requirements. So for example, we have uh, all our employees here with all their details. And I have now very um, comprehensive options to do the, the planning here. So for example, I could add new employees here with you know, all the details. Uh, that they have. This is supported also by validation. So for example, I can only choose from existing um, types. I have date pickers here and I can then add these new employees here. I would immediately see what are the implications uh, with all the KPIs that I can do um, in Power BI. But all of this, you can see there's a lot of power here, but this also needs a bit of control. So everything that the users are doing here um, gets recorded. So um, if I go and this is just another Power BI report that links to the unified uh, table, I can see now all the transactions that all users have done. So for example, this particular user, this particular time, changed some data uh, in this particular way. I can filter this now in, uh, in any way I like. And also all the, the planning steps are limited by these um, governance features. Um, on the one hand, of course, the, the audit trail, the recording, but also the user rights. So you can exactly define you know, who is allowed to change what. And this will be automatically applied in all the visuals uh, that are used on the report. So in Acaris in, for Power BI uh, provides nine custom visuals that cover all these planning requirements. This could go from some uh, very unique options where you can do your planning uh, by drag and drop and just drag and drop the um, plan as you want to. You can immediately then see what are the implications. You can lock targets. I want to lock the 6665 target, but I still want to change a value and you can see the other ones adapt automatically. So this is just a little bit um, of an overview of what's possible in a unified way. So the users are all working on the same single database. Uh, that is um, automatically generated from these source systems or from Power BI, uh, have all these planning capabilities, but also everything is governed um, so that you have clear transparency of what's going on. And the same thing also works uh, in Excel, just very quickly. So if we look here at Excel, this is the Actaris add-in. I can see now the same data model that you saw in Power BI, but I have now the option with all the Excel flexibility to do my plans here and send the data back to the database, all governed by the same um, workflows, or be part of the same workflow where I can immediately see where are we in the workflow, who has submitted the budget, and so on. So this just is a little bit um, of an overview um, of what's possible um, with uh, unified planning. And I uh, just want to cover a few live examples uh, where we have implemented this approach. For example, the biggest, one of the biggest sports groups in the world have uh, re replaced their legacy uh, CPM applications with a unified SQL platform and Power BI. Uh, this um, uh, provided them seven-figure seven license figures just from a license cost perspective. And the entire um, application was nearly built uh, directly by their own teams. So we provide a little bit of guidance initially and our partners to help them get started, but then they did very complex landing cost and demand planning simulations themselves. Similarly, uh, a beverage group uh, in German, one of the biggest in the world, um, they had a failed attempt with another uh, solution that also integrates with Power BI, but didn't really work for them. Um, and they had a, a very tight deadline. They had to deploy a solution with very complex demand planning and discounts um, within two weeks. And this was achieved uh, not just that uh, the 30 subsidiaries were able to plan, but also uh, that they were in dramatically improving their financial reporting with all these analytics capabilities and the specialized Power BI visuals that the Terrace provides for financial reporting. 
so this is it from um, uh, my perspective. Um, there's, uh, we have a few case studies as well that, that outline the savings and, and the potential. So if you're interested in that, please have a look at our website. And then the only thing left to me is if you're interested to try it out, please just go to our website at carries.com. It really only takes five minutes to get started. And um, also, as I mentioned before, if you have any more questions, please feel free to contact with me. Uh, and of course, also um, our teams around the world and our partners. We have now 32 plus partners across the globe and so really every major part of the world. And uh, these partners are certified and can provide um, you know, services around the platform and can also answer all your questions. And with this, I, I pass on to my team, Ezan and Darren, who's uh, running our operations in the United States. And uh, they will be able to answer any questions that you have. Thank you very much.